Hello, everyone. Hi. How's everyone tonight? Good. Hi, I'm Julie Jones. I'm with Nations Home Warranty. And I'm going to talk to you guys this afternoon about what is a home warranty. I know, right? Do you not wish you had some coffee right now? Scotch? That would be awesome. <laughs> If I had it, I'd give it to you. Um, okay, so in the packet, hopefully you signed in up front with George and um, your, to get your, your one hour of CE, free CE, before you leave, do that, uh, and picked up a packet. This is, this is gonna talk, we, this is, I'm gonna follow this page by page. So it looks to me like everyone in the room knows what they're doing. This isn't the first time you've heard of home warranty. So I don't need, do I need to go back to Home Warranty 101 ABC? Okay. For the most part, home warranties are offered by the seller as a benefit to the buyer for buying the house. They put an allowance in the contract, as I cross myself, because with the seller's market, that's been something that has changed a little bit. So I was talking to Troy about value and, and how to, to add value to the home warranty product. Even though a seller's not offering a credit like they used to do back in the buyer's market days, it's still important for a buyer to have the option to have a home warranty. This is probably the most overpromised product that we offer. People say, inspection report, don't worry about that. Just put a home warranty on there. It'll take care of everything. That's a, that's a mistake. That's, you're not doing the buyers a, a service. So this is uh, the packet that I'm going to go through and talk to you about. I apologize. I don't have a super slick, sexy PowerPoint. Something happened in my IT department that's not formatted correctly. And the geniuses that are here tonight who are super geniuses, Rick and Adam and everyone else, they can't figure it out. So that's a conversation I'll have with my office tomorrow. Um, again, M MCE rules. Everybody has to sign in. I'm not going to make you sign out. We're not that strict. So as long as you've signed in and put your information in, you'll get one hour of CE for this class. So if you want to skip to page four, I'm going to ask the question, who is the knucklehead who started calling this a home warranty? It's not, a, it's not a warranty at all. It's a residential service contract. What we do is we're a company that hires vendors to come and correct mechanical failures that occur inside our clients' homes. That's what we do. There is a warranty on that repair, and every company has a different time frame. So be sure you know what that time frame is. Okay, so just a note, for 50 minutes, I have to be as generic as possible. The last 10 minutes of this, if y'all are all still here and awake, I'll take questions about my specific company in this industry. So if you look on page four, you're going to see, what is a residential service contract? It's a service plan that repairs and replaces specific mechanical systems and appliances. It can cover pest and termite, those types of things. Seller's coverage is available and buyer's coverage is available. Did you know that we're governed by TREC just like you are? So if you have a complaint or a, well, no one ever has a compliment, but if you have a complaint and you want to register it, TREC is where you go. That's our governing body. Just, and that means that the contract can't be changed. So if you, the contract that you have from whatever company you're using, it has terms and conditions in it. That company can't just change something because they, you want them to, or the buyer wants them to, or they feel like it. Everything, any change to that, uh, policy has to go through TREC. So it's a, it's a pretty rigid deal. We work in conjunction with the homeowner's insurance. So for example, if the dishwasher springs a leak and it pours water all over the hardwood floors, you would call the home warranty company to repair or replace the dishwasher, but then you would call the homeowner's insurance to re replace those hardwood floors. That's a secondary damage. So we work together to re repair things inside the home. So uh, in, at the end of page four and into page five, what we try to explain to homeowners and buyers, if we get the opportunity, is that when something happens, a failure occurs that 
you think that the manufacturer didn't design that system or appliance to do? So the water heater. All of a sudden, the water heater does, stops heating the water. That's what the manufacturers designed it to do, is to heat the water. It quits heating the water, that's when you place a claim for the, home, for the hot water heater. It, that's what home warranty is. We will come out if it needs to be replaced. The home warranty will pay for the water heater to be replaced and for, pay for the labor to install it. If you go to the higher policy levels, you're going to have more money in the contract for those buyers. Permits, haul off code, all of that will help the buyers. So it's important, no matter what home warranty company you're using, is to connect the buyer with the rep. Because that way you have a team around you that is, is on your side and they're going to explain to the buyers what this is. You don't have to take the time to go through the 12 page contract and it, try to figure out what does this cover. That's not really your job to do. Your job is to have a good team on your side. So we talk about the benefits. The benefits are for people who spend all their money to get into a home and they need help financially with repairs as, as things go on. My product is not designed for the guy that has a 10,000 square foot home that wants service in five minutes and he's used to people. That's not the perfect customer for home warranty. It's really best for your first time home buyers or your move up buyers that have spent all their money on getting into that home and they need help with repairs that could come up with the home. That's the perfect customer for home warranty. There's a copay, a trade fee call due each time a vendor comes out, just like when you go to the doctor, whether he fixes your cold or not, you have to pay the copay. So that's what it costs to get him in his truck to the front door. And what he does after that is, is based on the policy. If he's got a part on his truck that's going to fix the problem, he'll fix it right there when he's there. If he has to order a part and come back, he's going to tell the homeowner that. If it's a bigger job, most of the time it has to do with the AC, then he's going to give a written estimate of what that repair or replacement is going to look like, and then it's the homeowner's decision how they want to proceed. So if you look at page six, it gives you some bullet points of things that are covered under the home warranty. When I say mechanical systems, these are the kind of things I'm explaining. Air conditioning, heating, electrical, range, oven, dishwasher, all of those things are mechanical items and mechanical systems inside the home that can fail. We can't help you with the roof. We can't help you with the foundation. We don't help with doors or windows, just the mechanical failures. Some companies offer pest control, lawn services, Reiki service. There's all kind. There's a variety of options and, and things that, that home warranty companies cover. Just be prepared to know what that is. Um, I don't know. I think there's probably 16, 17 home warranty companies that are licensed to do business in Texas. You guys could probably name off the top six or seven just off the top of your head. Be sure they're licensed to do business in Texas because everybody's so internet savvy these days. They go online and everybody's looking for a bargain and they may go online and they may find a company that's cheaper than the ones that, they, that you and I all know. But if they're not licensed by track, there's no recourse. So if they go out of business, there's no way to help that buyer. Because in Texas with Trek, we have to put 50% of every policy in an escrow account. So in case something happens to our company, we're able to fulfill the contract to the end of the term. That's why it's important that everyone choose a licensed company to do business with. Um, page seven gives you all kinds of optional coverage items that are available that could be in an upgraded package or could be an optional coverage that they could buy. And it covers an extensive part, extensive things. Again, reiki service, that's a big thing. Everyone needs to have their locks changed when they move into a home. They need to know that they're the only ones who have a key to the house. Some companies charge for it, others companies it's complimentary. Undetectable pre-existing conditions. That's a big question that I get. And, and what, you know, what does that mean, everyone asks. Well, if you have a home inspection and the home inspector says, this item, this system is deficient, then that's a known pre-existing condition because the inspector has made it known to everyone. If the inspector says everything is working fine, the AC is, the temperature differential, the split is good, I recommend no further action, then your homeowner's good to go. 
If he says, I recommend a licensed HVAC company come out and evaluate the system, it's good to do that. Because if you don't have the paperwork that corroborates what the inspector recommended you do, you're rolling the dice as far as if, if the coverage will be available or not. Sellers don't go up in their attic and they don't look at this stuff. They don't know they're not licensed. So just pay attention to the home inspection report. And that's something I help with buyers understand. I help them, I walk them through their home inspection and it help them understand what's code. Because inspectors are all about code. I mean, they talk about, like, that may be part of their job, but it's code heavy. And um, code will be taken care of if, the, if we have to come in and replace something. That's part of what home warranty does is brings it to code. Maintenance. Maintenance is the homeowner's responsibility. That's something I cover with buyers when I have the opportunity to talk to them. Um, home warranty companies offer checkups, which means we come, the company comes out, they look at the system, they say it needs to be clean. This is, um, was manufactured in 1979. It's going to die any day now. You need to start saving up for that. Because home warranty replaces parts as they fail. So if the, con the coil goes out, we'll replace the coil. We'll also give the homeowner the option to replace the entire system for a cost, for the cost, but it should include a discount from that home warranty company. I'm uh, at page eight, seven and eight. Um, uh, let's go back to page eight. So mismatched systems. Um, you know, mismatched systems. If you've got a three-ton inside and a two-ton upstairs, that's considered mismatched. Um, it could put stress on the system. If the compressor goes out because it's the other one is too big and it's been pushing too much air through, then we will replace. The, we'll repair the mechanical failure once the system is matched. We won't make a match. We do not make the match. Mm -hmm. Well, no, the inspector, that's part of his, his job is to talk about, he, he can tell by the outside what is, what, if it's matched or not. Well, I would think so. Uh, are you an inspector? Yeah. Uh, okay, tell me. Okay, but do you recommend an HVAC company come out and evaluate the system in your reports? If, if there are certain things, if there's problems with the uh, temperature Okay, okay. What is, uh, you know, this basic problem that I want to solve. Okay. But not as a matter of course, only in specifics. Right. Now, 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 what I will do sometimes is if, if I'm looking at a particular square footage and I see a, a unit that's maybe a little bit smaller. Undersized. Mm -hmm. Correct. Sure. Absolutely. Um, and so it would be a case by case. That's the answer to your question. I mean, I for for me to say, oh, uh, across the board, all home warranties will cover a mismatch, mismatch system. That would not be a true statement from me. So. For me, it's, it's a case by case. But for my company, if your system is mismatched, then it must match for us to correct a mechanical failure. We're not going to go in and match it. Right. Sure. A lot of times, I mean, I do see problems with the HVAC systems. I'm going to say, I'm wrapping up a service. Right. So when you get the company in there, mm -hmm. they have the HVAC technician tell you whether or not. Correct. That's what I see more and more from inspectors is, is that they recommend that, that this system be evaluated. Not just serve, I mean, you know, it may look great to you and the temperature, but evaluated. So that's, that's what I am seeing more and more. Sir? So, if you put a fence in the city, a lot of people don't know that you've got to have a fence. So, if I'm a homeowner, I can do that. I want to. 
So let me give you an example of that. When you talked about the pan, it, the secondary pan, what I say to buyers who have an inspection report that says there's no secondary pan, what I tell them is when the water heater fails, we'll bring it to code and we're going to put a, fan, a pan in there. And that's the function of home warranty. That's why we hire licensed plumbers. And forgive me if Handy Dan Man is in the you know Handy Dan Man is in the room because if he doesn't pull a permit and he installs a water heater and your house burns down your insurance company will not build or rebuild your house because you didn't pull a permit. So this is a hard conversation all home warranty company reps have with their buyers and their buyers reps. It is cheaper to hire a handyman, it is. And it may be just as simple and nothing will ever happen in the whole wide world. But if it does, there'll be a, there, there could be a problem. So, sir. I believe that. Now, the thing is, is that our reports are not transferable. They're all for the owner. Right. And they're really not what you're about to see. I agree. So, I mean, if you really need to see something, mm -hmm. your purpose, you should really hire a home inspection uh, for your purposes mm -hmm. to. And that's a great point. What I, I, and this is this class. Just be, let's just be clear. This class is not supposed to be company specific. So as much as I'm wanting to jump in there and tell you what I do and what I don't do as a company, um, I, I don't. I've, I don't know what other companies do as far as that's concerned. If I ask your buyer, the homeowner, for that page of the home inspection, it's to fight for them, not against them, because that's. Why would I want to sink that battleship? They're, those are my customers. I want to help them. So, I mean, that's the home inspection is great, and it's it's it gives the buyer an idea of what they're buying. Um, it's up to the educated realtor to explain to them. Here's what you should worry about. Here's what you may not have to worry about. You know, here's what could come in the future. You're giving them an overview of the house they're buying. Okay, so one thing that um, buyers should always do and should always have the opportunity to do is be uh, connected with the home warranty rep so that they can explain what the policy is. So many buyers go into this arrangement agreement with a, a, a view of the a, 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 it's. It, What's the word I'm looking for? I'm so sorry. I'm drawing a blank. But it's it's an, the expectations are unrealistic, and so it's important so that, that your home warranty rep explains to your buyers what is this policy, what does it do for me, what is it going to get me, what can I expect, how do I make a claim, what do I do? Because no one knows. You guys don't have time to explain it. That's not your job. Sure, and that's why I want to, me as, a, me as my own home warranty company, I want to talk to your buyers. So I have that opportunity to explain everything to them. And I have several emails that I send that explain process, that explain what it is, what to do, what to expect. Um, communication is the key, in my opinion. Do you review everyone? No, not everyone, but every chance, every opportunity I get. Um, and that's why I... I like to come out and talk to you guys just to educate you on the opportunity to have your home warranty rep, whoever that is, to do their to do their job, you know, quite frankly. And that is to educate your buyers. Your sellers right now, the listing agents, you know, your 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 listings are going so fast, your sellers really don't have a lot of time, but your buyers do. Once the option period is complete and is, is over, that's when the that's when we need to talk to them. With the new TRID requirements, everything has to be to title three days before closing, right? So the CD can be prepared. If they haven't chosen a policy, they don't know what they're getting, that could delay your closing. It's just all about a concierge frame of mind, in my opinion. And I think I sort of skipped through that. The title company, title companies 
order home warranty. Some title companies don't order home warranty. It just depends. But if you have a good real reputation with your home warranty rep, she or he is going to take care of everything for you. You're not going to rely on the title company. You're not going to rely on you or your assistants to do this job. That's our job. Do you I do. Absolutely. Yes. Um, page 11 is a kind of a list of all the limitations of that liability. Um, commercial, let's talk about commercial equipment because more and more nobody has a regular kitchen. You know, nobody has your grandma's kitchen anymore. Everything is knocked out. And what we're going to see going forward is a limitation in home warranty coverage on commercial equipment in the kitchen. So if you have equipment in the home that when you go to the manufacturer's website and that manufacturer classifies this as commercial equipment, it will be excluded from the home warranty. Mm -hmm. commercial, commercial equipment has always been excluded by home warranty. The manu you go to the manufacturer's warranty, and if the manufacturer describes it as commercial grade equipment, not pro, that's not, you know, not professional series, that's not commercial grade. There's a difference. And you've all seen it. Sir? Yeah, if it's four feet across, it could be considered commercial. It's up to the manufacturer's website to tell us what is commercial and what is not. That's the easiest way for us to describe it. It depends on how big it is. It depends on what Viking describes it as. Viking has a whole pro series that's not commercial. But if you do business in the high-end homes, six, seven, eight, ten thousand square feet, you're going to need to get with your home warranty rep and talk about what appliances are in the home. Here's an example. You have a built-in sub-zero type refrigerator that is more than 48 inches across. Most likely, that freezer component is, doesn't share the same compressor as the refrigerator. It's separate equipment. You would then need to add freestanding freezer coverage to make sure that that freezer component is covered. They don't share equipment. But if your rep doesn't ask the question, it doesn't get covered and then your homeowner's upset and feels, you know, bad. You're right. That's why I ask the question every time. When I get the property address, I go to DCAT or Colon CAT or Denton CAT or wherever it is, and I go look at that property. Because most likely, the price is going to change over 5,000 square feet. Most of these policies that you're seeing in the home warranty world are written for homes that are 5,000 square feet or less. Well, that's a pretty big house. I mean, 5,000 square feet is a pretty big house. So it is likely because kitchens are knocked out these days, they're going to have to add that freestanding freezer. All of this to say is go back to your rep. Have a good relationship with your rep. Know that your rep is asking the right questions. That's my advice to you there. But be aware of what's in the home. Outdoor kitchens. You know, a lot of companies exclude outdoor kitchens. You just have to know what you're getting. Do you I can't answer that right this moment. No, we do. We do not. We do not cover any equipment that is out that is not rated for weather. And so, outdoor kitchens are typically covered, but they're not rated for weather, like pool equipment. Another thing you'll find in the bigger homes are the computerized, the energy management systems. They have a computer that controls the whole house. Um, that, that's something that ha the home warranty industry has not embraced at this point. Um, because we're offering a product to you at about $600 a year price point. So if you think of that and you apply that to a quarter million dollar home, half a million dollar home, um, you have to understand that that's why the policy is limited. And so that's why I talked to you earlier about homes, home buyers who may not be our home warranty's best candidate. So homes that are huge, these, the, the 10,000 square foot or more, you're going to run into a problem with the homeowners because they're used to having home service 
in an hour. And mostly, most of the time with home work, you have to wait till the next day. You call in on a Monday morning, you get a call back, and this appointment is set for Tuesday. That's typically how it goes. A lot of people in those high-end homes don't want to wait that long. So if, you, or if you're negotiating for homes that are more than 5,000 square feet, I recommend you contact your rep to talk to them about A, what the policy is going to cost, because it's going to go up a little bit, and then what um, other things they may or may not cover. So really, that, that is, ends my presentation. I know you're so happy to get out of here. Uh, totally boring subject. I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Yes, most home warranty companies offer listing coverage. Yes, and it's generally their basic plan. The, correct. Yeah, listing coverage. Mm -hmm. Well, everyone has to start somewhere. Every company has to start somewhere, and most start with a basic plan. So it's going to cover a lot of things, but it won't cover as much as the buyer's policy. The buyer's policy offers money for permits and code upgrades, haul away of old equipment, free on recapture, things like that. The basic plan is going to pay for the repair of that one. So their out of pocket will be higher. That's my point. It depends. Yeah. Do you have multiple There's three. I have three. My company has three. Mm -hmm. The buyers, where the buyers, the, what I would call the buyer's basic, okay. and then the buyer's superior. It's with my company. It's free. We don't charge for listing coverage. We hope so. Yeah, sellers. You know, it's a free country. They can do what they want, but we hope that they offer some money in the buyer's plan for the for the buyers. Richard. Yes. Say again. Well, I guess the answer to that would be if the seller had, while it was listed, while it was listed, if the seller called and had our AC company come out and evaluate the system because it wasn't maybe cooling properly and they did a repair, we're going to warranty that repair through to the new buyers. Absolutely. Now, so is that listing coverage is not for a whole year? It's for the term of the listing. The contract is 180 days. If your house is on the market for 180 days, it may be overpriced. Sure. Well, they can buy a buyer's policy. Absolutely. No, if, you're, if your listing needs to go beyond the 180 days, just send me an email and I can extend it. Absolutely. The copay? It's $65. Mm -hmm. Yep. Right. Oh, dear. No, we have no lobbyist. I guess I'm trying to understand your question so I can answer it correctly. When you say a legal document, what does that mean? So you're talking about the RSC addendum? That's a part of the Trek contract? I don't know, I guess I'm... Oh, there's a, there's, a, there's a paragraph that says that the seller could, if he would like, offer an allowance for the buyers. Sure. I've been doing this for nine years, so you'll have to forgive me. I, was, I don't know how that happened. I don't know. Maybe it was just because it was an industry standard. I know that our was much. Sure. And in the last two years, I've spent more time working on these things than I have selling. Well, that's a problem. Yes, and I don't know that you and I know each other. And so you have? Okay. Okay. These are our four reps. Yeah. Okay. And I apologize for that. Totally. I mean, that's. 
no, 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 but I represent the company. No, I totally represent the company, and, and I understand, I, believe me, I, you know, 50% of my phone calls are buyers that are calling me because my agents are, are listening, and they say, hey, call Julie or email Julie, and she'll get you, walk you through the whole thing. The other half are people who are not happy because something wasn't covered or it wasn't covered to their expectation, but I was never able to talk to that buyer, you know, and explain what the process is. So it's just, it's really a matter of education, and I don't know who's out there educating, but I know that's what I spend every single day, eight hours a day trying to do, is educate the buyers so that your referrals stay intact and my customers stay in our system. It doesn't do me any good to lose a customer because there goes my next five years of, of renewal money. So it's important to us. Nations is a local company. We're a woman-owned company. Sharon Harrison is our owner. We're 20 years old this year. The entire operation is located at Forest Lane and Marsh. Um, so if you're a fan of being able to refer a local company, we're a good option for you. Um, I would love you know, to earn your trust and try and turn your experience around if you've had a bad experience. Would love the opportunity to try and help you guys do more business and do more business going down the road because you've saved those referrals. You've done, you've looked like a hero to them. With my company, when, our, when your buyers make a claim, you get an email that tells you that they made a claim. So you get the opportunity to reach back out to them, if you so choose, to um, stay in touch with them. You may not want to talk about the dishwasher claim they just made, but you can if you want. But the bigger picture is you get to talk to them about what's going on in their life. Do they know anybody that's ready to buy a house? You know, how are the kids and the dogs and all that? You're staying top of mind. So we help you advertise your business, and that's um, a free benefit to you for, as well. Okay, well, if there aren't any more questions, all my contact information is on everything you have in front of you. So if something comes up in the future, I am certainly happy to help you um, do more. So thanks so much.